Okay. Kiss the check, boys. We're here. Another episode of Jibber Jabber. I'm gonna be watching some nonsense. I know, it's like... The, uh, this follow of 76 video is a really good watch, but, uh... You know, to see, you know, how the, how bad this shit can go. But, uh, the No Man's Sky video one is almost like inspirational one. I don't know, man, it's, it's like, he done him a great favor there. I've seen this one like twice, but uh, I don't think we watched it on stream. Did I clear my history? No, nope, any, any uh, weirdo shit on the right? So this is the Fallout 76 from Internet Historian. Uh, he made a video about uh, Fallout 76. Although the Fallout 76 did got better, but uh, when you see some of this shit, it's unbelievable. You know, it's definitely a better game these days. So, uh, you can't really talk that much shit about Fallout 76. But uh, the, the shit they tried to get away with it initially, it's like, you know, they're listing a bare bones uh, Black Orc Big Boss, and then, you know, uh, waiting a while to patch it. Now we can see... Uh, the, the Fallout 76 got, did get better, it actually lost the positive review, so I wonder what happened there. I, I'm i not a fan of uh, a multiplayer Fallout, to, to say the least, you know, it's like, I feel like uh, Bethesda burned a lot of time making this game, even if it was, you know, not Bethesda, but somebody else, who knows. But still, I feel like uh, we were just like falling back behind a couple of years just for some shameless cash grabs. If you found this tape, it means that everyone is dead. Or working at a different office. How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout. This guy has the perfect voice for this. June 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Have we waited long enough, guys? Oh, God, yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My God, it was exciting. And they promised we'd know more at E3. E3 hype time. <laughs> Look at those guys. The press <laughs> conference. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Well, definitely it was something there when I played the game. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. What's this quality, man? And it's our biggest one yet. My God, not for Not quite HD. Yeah. November 14th, 2018. The game goes live with a day one patch of 50 gigabytes. For fuck's sake. So let me pause this for a second. This shit is better than most, most comedy these days. Like the TV shows and movies, just like you just this is just like 10 out of 10 content. I'll see you tomorrow, but once that's downloaded, look at this. Start logging into the hellscape that is Fallout 76. I've seen some fan oh, dear lord, they never fix the bugs, um. and there are so many of them. Goodbye, world, goodbye, <laughs> necks, goodbye, body, <laughs> goodbye, heads, bugs, bugs, bugs everywhere. Server crashes. I actually crash. had this bug when they're trying to k kill something and the server does the register damage, and that was recent. Bugs imported from Fallout 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, uh, server's dead. Text is far too texturous and all consuming void. Errorlock 307. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T pose. Frame rate problems, screen tear problems, getting too swole, getting underneath the map, getting attacked by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. It kind of speaks for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp resets after every session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Praise my Talos. During this, <laughs> gonna have to wait on that shit. Read denied. Give it the worst timing, man. Surprise. Floating objects and a traveling merchant. Just to name a few. Joseph Anson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found personally. That video is three hours long. Um, but it gets worse. 
Error CE348780 can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. A few PC players had their computers brick entirely. Also, when the date rolled over to the 1st of January 2019, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. No one thought it prudent to program in other years in an always online game. And a few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. Bethesda said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> and many players are not thrilled with this game, and they want Bethesda to know that. And they you want can play Kick Wiss, yeah. to know that too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes, it is. Banned for racism. Thread locked. They had no direct outlet for their rage. The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Reddit. Twitter. Bethesda's other games on Steam. The backlash was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they ain't. This is so sad. Despacito, play Country Roads. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. And the YouTube community had this to say It's really fucking boring. Could barely bring myself to play it in order to finish this review. No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not gonna subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, Fallout 76 is morally, technically, and creatively bankrupt. The mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. So what happened? Well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. Plus, this wasn't Bethesda's A-Team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced... Goddamn bad team, B teams. This is what we're getting in Warhammer 2 recently. Getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems. Hey Todd, I stayed up all night and I just We're finished. We're gonna need 16 times the detail. We're gonna need the out of vortex Todd. and more lampires. We're gonna need four times the size of Fallout 4. That and they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda creation engine into a multiplayer framework. <laughs> what else could you expect? That's why I give my kids Fallout 76. The fool. <laughs> Now, Bethesda could tolerate the bugs and the bad reviews and the irate players, but what they couldn't tolerate God were damn. the exploits. Infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. Server hopping for more items, infinite cash and infinite duplication. Unlimited XP, unlimited nuking. The nuclear codes were unencrypted and you could wall click into the quest room. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. So Bethesda was ready with the ban hammer this just and a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who happened by. But Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning people. No, they're a progressive company with big ideas. They wanted to give a road to redemption. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. We would be willing to accept an essay on why the use of... It's like they've never done a multiplayer game, game in their life. In online game community. That's right. 500 words on why you're a very naughty boy, and they may just give you your account back. But a couple of days later, the mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. One more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game is kept here. Security has to be top-notch, because otherwise, someone could just waltz in and take all all of the best items in the game, and it would be an absolute disaster. Well, shit. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items on a black market of sorts. At first, they tried the usual approach. Banning people who had some of the best items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun? Die, cheater! Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room. 
and they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf accounts. Get in quick with a level 1 account. Get all that good shit. Then get the fuck out. Then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Then transfer that stuff to your main account and you're good to go. Bethesda then takes out this level 1 and calls it mission accomplished. And you've just beaten the game. Fucking hell, man. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurfs. <clears throat> uh, hello, Cheetah. Do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you, please? Should we not hear back from you, the account will simply remain suspended. It's not known whether this approach works, but from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the dev room. November 22nd, 2018. Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From $60 to $40. To $35. To $30. You can find it for $15 on eBay, and in Germany, they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. Also, some stores Please play our game! We'll pay you! But to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero. Because it brings people into the atomic shop, which is where the real margins are. And it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 did. Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. Although, what's the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling you to redeem an online code? And while sales are low, returns are high. Immediately upon release, people began asking Bethesda for a refund. 76 is not on Steam, it's on Bethesda's own platform. So they have all the control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours of play. Quite generous, but then word about this spread to forums. Then to Reddit, and a post got 12,500 upvotes informing people that this made pretty much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? Shut it down, lads. No. No, no one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize for the inconvenience. Die. A few things followed. First, people got mad. One hardcore gamer even trashed a GameStop for refusing his refund. A bit of an overreaction, but probably also fake. Second, the media. And third, a class action lawsuit. Their inconsistent refund policy and terms of service may not be strictly legal. November 27th, 2018. Miglachio and Rathod LLP filed a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Their main argument is that it's a sometimes unplayable game owing to its technical problems, then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release it anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Updates on this lawsuit are slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Ad time. Look, there's a meteor headed straight to Earth. Oh my god. We must do something. Was anyone curious enough to read about it online? Not me. Not me either. Nope. Oh no! Now people think I'm curiositystream.com slash internet story. Ads over. Let's rewind a little bit. Fallout fans made their pre-orders, and the most dedicated pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Wow. Wow! It came with a helmet, box, map, army toys, and a genuine West Tech canvas bag. Fast forward to the release. And customers notice that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas in the land, Ooh, yummy. look a bit different. 
Brown. In fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Brown. Do they Brown. Really just advertise one thing and deliver another? Can't do that. So there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. By this point, customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything. This can't be real. That's the whole email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. Naturally, the internet goes This is wild. a scam you just hear about in America. Wow. Wow. Well, I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. Okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR nightmare. We have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. Fantastic idea. Hear ye, hear ye. Anyone who paid two to three hundred dollars for the power armor. Two to three hundred dollars, what? Buy entitled to five dollars worth of in game currency that you'll be able to spend with us. Five hundred atoms? Fuck yeah! What are you gonna do with your atoms? I'm gonna buy five eighteenths of the white paint version of the power armor. Whoa! What about you? Light wood laminate, light wood laminate, light wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag! He's right! Fuck the bag! Light wood laminate, light wood laminate. Of course, this was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage, and even the media started piling on. Almost alien. Where's Virgin it even became part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. Was it Boogie F? apologizing for their curt customer service and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. That was quickly debunked. Because it turns out, they did make the canvas bag. Except they gave them all out to influencers. Oh dear. It's not the same one, of course. But it's sourced from that ever-scarce material, canvas. But what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game. If you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be found at the atom shop, for 700 atoms. Ooh, just short. Well, the bleating from the online community continued, and Bethesda's lawyers realized there would be trouble, so they decided to capitulate. All right, fine. We'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill out this form with your name, personal details, address, etc., etc., and we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six months. <laughs> but it doesn't quite end there. Because Bethesda is known for bugs, and of course their website is a buggy mess too. Turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. In fact, people can open and close and change them at will. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Not knowing how to immediately fix the problem, Bethesda panics and temporarily shuts down the whole website. And that is the tale of the duffel kerfuffle. How could this have been so difficult? They made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch, a rum drink. Nuka Cola Dark. Pre-orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th. $80 plus postage and handling. Not cheap, but in return you got a very cool bootle. Looks good on the shelf. A great conversation piece with the family over Thanksgiving. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came and went and there was no rum. Uh, okay. A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. The usual fallout standard. All of this just works. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. <laughs> so we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered. But as a show of good faith, we made this promotional video for you. And this is where things went from tardy to retardy. Right there. Did you catch that? 
That's just a regular industry bottle and a plastic shell. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? People were not happy. Look at that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was a plastic shell. Super premium, we were promised. And the media agreed. So they charge premium price, but put minimal effort into it. Their orders. Like $2 shit. Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. Then what the fuck? We, we spent a hundred hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. So it arrives, just a few days before uh, Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Uh, can I swear on this? It's my own show. Ah. Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can <laughs> pour inside the shell from the poor <laughs> How are you made this damn thing? Like That's me when I'm drunk, when I'm trying to pour my glass. God damn, all over the table. <laughs> you do that, you oh, pour inside the shell. Oh my pour god. Pour How they made this damn thing. Spilled like half the shot. It's very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. Any liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Some made their own at home. Eighty dollars was about on par. But look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. They're on Etsy. They're far cheaper, and they actually give a shit. Not gonna lie though, some of the memes that came out of this were pretty good. Now, many claim that this was an honest mistake. Sorry. Or that customers were at fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All Biggest marketing, marketing more like scamming. All of the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. They give plenty of descriptions of the product too, and not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. Before the product was even available, they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. This raised some eyebrows, and people on Reddit even called them out for it. So they deleted them. You can see all this activity on the Wayback Machine. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. This price That's is cool. ridiculous. Good idea. I'd have that. Fallout 76 pant. Singular. But why is he so mad? The photography is all just slightly... off. This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. But does the 76 in $276 really make it more immersive? And why did they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an iron? Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, good job, print? Now that's surprising. And what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. Yeah, one of those, please. But bigger and brown. Is that so hard? Let's get back to the game. December 2018. There are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. First, the good. For PC, they included a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. but it also brought in field of view sliders. Hooray! Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic weapons. Hooray! They decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20% of people's inventory. I got a box of bobby pins the other week that said, that said, weigh these. <laughs> <laughs> there were also upgrades to the camp that allowed for easier construction, and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray. The bad. A whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. Emo production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard, I'll fuck you up. And the backlash was significant because everybody knew why Bethesda was doing it. To encourage people to use the atomic shop. 
Every but the game is good, you're gonna use the, you know, the you're gonna buy something in Tommy's shop, right? But the game is bad, forcing people to use it is bad. For 20. Blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh look, $3 for the same sweater vest and slacks item imported from Fallout 4. But the biggest offense of all was the holiday emote bundle. $24 for some Christmas themed emotes. Twice the price of these games. The media agreed that these were egregious prices. But worse, they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price. But it's not. It was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price, only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. That's illegal, here in Australia at least, in Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on this and pointed <laughs> well, out... Was it Bieber dead on the Canada's discount bill? ...discount and just setting it as the always intended price. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just going to leave it here. I didn't even get a chance to touch on the new pay-to-win fiasco. The new camera item that lets you teleport, dwindling player numbers. But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. So, maybe Bethesda can do it too. But for now, Todd returns to cryostasis. Hiding in his bunker until the bombs of outrage stop falling. God damn this video, man. And returning only when it's time to get our hopes up. Once again. You know, I totally forgot the uh, uh, the Microsoft bought uh, uh, Bethesda, part company. Totally forgot about that. So they now own both uh, Oblivion and uh, Bethesda companies. And they're both basically... Uh, could be doing the uh, first person uh, open world open world games RPGs what do people say about Fallout 76 these days I haven't played I did a couple of streams of it but uh, I don't know man look at these visuals man this is like Rome 2 shit can't have these visuals in the game, it's always something uh, e e glitchy. It's like, it's like Rome 2 guys, so you see how you guys have pictures on Rome 2? This was 2013, look at this shit, 2013. It took me three different computers, uh, over uh, five years later to achieve this quality on a four thousand dollar pc elich talking shit about room 2 when chad had to bribe him into playing uh, warhammer what are you talking about flerp My friend gifted me Warhammer. I'm, I'm not sure how that's a bribe. It was, it was my close friend at the time gifted me the game and I uh, got, got into it. But yeah, after Warhammer, the ROM 2 did look pretty bad. You were so long into playing it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like with a lot of new things. Three, three euros of blood and gore. What about the Warhammer 2 blood and gore? The next stream uh, we have is gonna be ROM 2. Uh, the goal is being completed, boys. 10 million shekels.
Poof. So, uh, we're starting a room 2 campaign. It's gonna be, uh, uh, for a new perspective, so we're gonna be going into the game uh, with a fresh, uh, you know, open mind. And, uh, and we're gonna be, uh, you know, checking the shit, not really dwell on the old stuff. I haven't played the vanilla campaign since, you know, it's been a while. We haven't really got into into the politics or the uh, some of the page stuff. Because we've been, you know, so tied into the mods even before. But they, some of the ones I used got outdated. So we're going to be doing a roam in the main campaign. And uh, there'll be no auto-resolving battles. And uh, we'll be just be playing it. Oh god, a little bit more than two hours. It'll definitely going to be more than two hours, I promise. So I'll see you guys on the uh, on the on the next stream. I'll put the announcement on Twitter. We'll see. Maybe it's gonna be in uh, in an hour or two, or maybe it's gonna be tomorrow. And it'll uh, sober up a bit.